Hey guys, we are live now. Um, this is a private webinar and I'm Phil Kiprianu for uh, originally the Shopify strategy group. And um, you are in this webinar because you probably heard about this webinar. So hi Clifford. Hi guys, just tell me where you're from um, so I can be sure that you can hear me well. Just want to make sure where are you from? <laughs> So basically, this webinar is about the power of data and also about everything related to what um, happened recently with Facebook, the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Um, and I want to reveal you also a bunch of stuff related to that. And because I think it's important as a marketer or as a, if you're not a marketer and you just um, you decided to join me just to understand more, I'll data is working on the internet and on Facebook. I think it's going to be um, a great place to be for the next hour. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of stuff so you can understand better um, how these big companies are grabbing your data. And it is, are they doing it like the legal way, let's say, or, or in the good way or not? I mean, this will be up to you at the end. I Christos Yasu. <laughs> from Greece. Great. Um, what else? Who, who, who are we having right now, live right now? I see Mike, Jody, Bruce, Donald, Christian, Alexander. Hi, Jody from New York. Amazing. And um, I will be, um, I will have like the replay of this video uh, later on for sure. Hey, Christian from San Francisco. Hope you're having a great weather there. Um, I will put this on my YouTube channel. Basically, it won't be available on Facebook or any on my Facebook page because I don't want to get Facebook um, see that and after get banned from that <laughs> directly because I, I post that kind of stuff directly on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to get banned from Facebook. <laughs> so um just want to make sure if you're seeing my screen right now i'm gonna be uh put it this like this okay guys just want to make sure can you see my screen so normally this is the weekly webinar uh, the chill Whitfield webinar and today we're going to talk about the power of data and i'll Data is uh, changing a lot of stuff right now. I mean, it has been there and changing stuff for a long time. Uh, but right now, it's just much more easier to grab people's data. Um, and basically, I will have a disclaimer because I used to be in the lead generation business heavily. So we were providing information to um, a mortgage company, insurance company, we were enriching, if we can say that, their database with the, the kind of data that we were doing back in the days. Um, the thing that you want to you, you, you need to understand is we never sold any user content without their express consent. Okay. We respect the privacy policies in place established by the law. So and there have been a, a lot of changes since 2008, since uh, I started in that um, in that kind of business. So, um, and things became much more difficult and you can see there's like, I think the GPDEA, something like, like that coming in, in Europe. I mean, the, the protection of data is gonna get like much more stronger or they will make it feel stronger, let's say for people because they see their stuff going everywhere. And you have just to think about our credit card companies are working. I mean, they are grabbing your information each time you're, you're making a purchase. And on the back end, when you sign the info, when you sign your your uh, your consent with the the credit card company, you consent um, for them to use that data to share with third party people. Okay, um, how do you think Facebook uh, got um, got so much data? They started for sure by grabbing data from their own user because they um, people would be. Um, they will consent of sharing their birthday, um, their pictures and all this kind of stuff. So they would do that. And they started back then in 2004. 
and um, and also they started to get uh, third-party data to enrich their data from Axiom, Epsilon, and a bunch of other uh, companies that grabs data from everywhere. So this is one way they they were able to use that. And there's like applications, software companies that are um, le letting you enrich your data, especially if you have um, uh, a CRM, let's say, a con uh, contact uh, relation manager software there. So you can build profile, and I will explain you a bit later how it is working, but basically you can build profile from scratch, totally from scratch. And this is what we call progressive profiling. So during a time frame, we'll be able like to have a lot of information about you without you knowing that we're grabbing, let's say, this much of information. So the problem is not really about getting information is you don't know how much information at the end this company are grabbing from you because one time you will leave your email, one time you will leave your email and your birthday, one time you will go on this website and you will make a, a purchase and this will go on and on and on, you know? So this has basically no limits at a certain point. Today's topics, what we're going to talk is about the, the Cambridge Analytica uh, scandal. We're going to talk about Mark Zuckerberg answers and we're going to go through that. We're going to go into understanding what the progressive profiling means, strategies behind tools that they use basically and the tools that we're using also as marketer to build that kind of profile. So if we're, if we're looking at the, at the scandal, okay, so first of all, we need to understand who is Cambridge Analytica. And this is the thing of, this is the kind of information they're um, showing us on their website. Basically, it's a data-driven um, business and they're doing like data-driven campaign. They're specialized in uh, marketing for e-commerce and also they're uh, much more um, specialized in political like we've seen and they started uh, working on Trump campaign earlier than 2016 because um, we we started like to see stuff coming in um, and some um, articles about what they did and how. I mean, I, I, I just went on Google and found out like a couple of articles that was like way back in 2016 talking about how this Cambridge Analytica was a bit shady as a company. And I mean, this is what these people were saying, because I mean, basically um, there's two reasons for that. First of all, I mean, people that are um, don't understand data and how data is grabbed, they will probably think right away, oh, we are going over uh, the privacy policy in place, you know? But basically one thing they don't understand is people are leaving traces, uh, footprints everywhere without, um, without the, the they they know because basically at a certain point they just accepted that kind of privacy in place but they didn't read it okay this is what's happening most of the time is when you're going over uh, a constant mutual constant between a website or uh, and yourself you're not reading everything you know sometimes you're getting like this pop-up and they, they tell you like the terms of of utilization terms of service privacy policy and all this kind of stuff and you scroll super fast and you get like the, this button and you accept. The thing that you don't understand is you just left all your information there. You accept to leave all your information there. So if people are going crazy, I mean, it's the problem is not basically this company is because, I mean, you don't take the time to read yourself what you should read. And you let this company uh, go into your own stuff, your personal stuff and your per personal uh, data information. OK, um, some interesting facts. And I'm going to I'm going to share that right now with you on the other screen, because I find this very interesting, uh, like I said. <laughs> so let me share that next screen here. Uh, share another screen. And here we go. OK, this is what I was uh, talking earlier is a lot of people are saying that Trump's new data team is shady. OK. Donald Trump considered political data overrated. He said so in May when he told the Associated Press Obama got the vote much more so than his data processing machine. And I think the same issue, issue uh, the same is true with me. So, and that, I mean, yes, I mean, data will influence people because you can use that data to gather some information, build information around that. 
And if you have been like um, in the in the e-commerce business, like me for for a while, you're gonna understand also how we use also this data. And one thing that came is how these people used, um, let's say, people for Trump and people against Trump to manipulate or divide the votes or divide uh, people around that. And when we are selling online, basically, we are using a bit the same method. You know, we are not going to sell only to the cat lovers. We are going to sell to the people that hate cats, you know, things like that. So we're using like this type of sentiment behind to um, to just generate sales. And the same thing can apply to um, to generate movement around uh, a cause there, you know. So Trump uh, and this political thing was uh, was one. The problem with that and um, the issue that um, basically Mark Zuckerberg brought is to do that. So they created like um, multiple fake accounts uh, where they increase, let's say, the um, the engagement. So they would get faster to the people understanding what they were doing and, and going faster to, the, to these people and create like this movement around that, you know. So hi, David. Nice to see you there. So basically, they use like, let's say, shady tricks to create that kind of stuff instead uh, by understanding for sure uh, what was, was there. But creating fake accounts, uh, I mean, that was part of their strategy uh, to do that. So. Basically, um, by creating like false engagement and creating um, that kind of stuff, you can manipulate what we say. We can you can manipulate how this kind of stuff will show in the news feed of Facebook. Okay, so creating false engagement will rank you better uh, and higher at a higher point in Facebook news feed. That was what was happening in two thousand. Uh, 15, 16, and um, it, it it went down in 17. Basically, Facebook started like to change that in 17. So, I mean, that was the way to manipulate because people people that were um, e even like against Trump or for Trump, I mean, they would get something that is very tied to them because they knew how to get that there by manipulating the newsfeed with their fake accounts. Uh, fake engagement and all this kind of stuff. So that was the thing. So, I mean, this article, imagine this article is from 2016 and now we are in 2018 and we already knew about that. I mean, I remember clearly about this company two, three years ago when um, when Trump, I mean, it, it was official that Trump uh, got that, you know. And by the way, this is not a political thing, you know, it's just like to understand what happened behind, you know? So if you're Trump, it's good. If you're against, it's good. I mean, I'm not there to, to talk about your uh, political uh, engagement, but just so you can understand how this happened. And another statement that that is uh, that Mark brought uh, later on on the CNN interview that he did, I think, like uh, yesterday night or earlier today, um, he said basically that um, they started like to, to to take action, you know, on the um, on the French uh, election. They were seeing like stuff. They were able like to stop things faster than they use on the latest, I think, Alabama uh, election as well. They, they they were able, you know, to move that. And you've seen also, you know, people coming. Yes, both from Russia, both from Macedonia, uh, and probably they've seen both from elsewhere as well. You know, so there's a lot of um, boats farm that can be created all around the world and create like this fake account, uh, even like from China, from wherever. I mean, you want it's it's not difficult to do it. You know, that's one thing. It's not difficult to do it. It's why they put an AI, AI, AI stuff, AI stuff or <laughs> AI stuff in place so they can recognize faster that um people that are having weird behaviors online are doing something very specific because this boat, basically they're programmed to do one thing. They're not so smart. Okay. Not so, not yet. It is coming like smart boats are coming. So it's going to be much more difficult in the near future to be able like to counter that. That's a big problem for social media globally. Okay. 
uh, it's going to have a huge impact in terms of the kind of information you will see on your newsfeed and all this kind of stuff. But I mean, uh, Mark now knows, seems to know that this is a real issue. And if he wants to protect his user base and investors and also uh, advertiser, he needs to do something strong because if not, people will start leaving Facebook because they just don't want to uh, get into this messy news feeds where people feel that they are manipulated all the time. So that's one thing. Another uh, article that I found, again, from 2016, and it, it, I just found out like today, I was using, doing like very fast, um, very fast search. And, um, and here you go. You know, I found out that this two article right away, and I was trying to find things, you know, before this year, 2016 again. So when London-based data firm Cambridge Analytica burst into the U.S. political scene last year by signing on, on with Ted Cruz presidential campaign, it was only a matter of time before the firm made an, an equally splashy move on the corporate stage, you know? So, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that you will find about, about this, uh, basically, um, firm. And the thing also that you need to know, I mean, they are the one now that are in front of the people, okay? They are the one that now... Um, are getting there. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with this business. It will be like, is this business will be like Blackwater and they will basically change their name and, and start again? Probably yes. I mean, if they feel that their image has been um, not so cool uh, anymore and people don't want to do business with this name, they will probably go there and change their um, their name, their CEO, and all this kind, but the basic, the the investor behind, because this is uh, basically uh, funded. Uh, I found that somewhere here um, by VCs. So um, on Crunchbase, you will see a bunch of stuff here. You have like funding round, uh, venture round, Cambridge. Investor Robert Mercer, you see like who was the head of the product, the CEO, and a bunch of information. You can see also all the past article right now going on. Um, and I mean, and all their tweets to defend themselves and you know, tell about what they what they did and all this kind of stuff. Um, basically, I mean, that kind of uh, of business will will not really go out of business because I mean they have a lot of data. This is a big data company. And this data can be used in any other way, you know. So yes, they will have um, they will have uh, people coming in and to verify if they are legit and if they accumulated a part of the data legally or and um, and this one and and this thing uh, will will put um, let's say they, it will put some sort of a future to this brand, let's say name, but the data behind will still live there. So people that think that it will be deleted or something like that, I mean, probably a very small part of what, whatever they accumulated. But if they want to get back that information, they will be able to do it. Now, um, let's go on Mark Zuckerberg answers. Um, and uh, that's one thing that is uh, very interesting here. So, and that will bring me to the next point, uh, which how they uh, accumulate the data, okay? So in 2013, a Cambridge University researcher named Alexander Colgan created a personal, personality quiz app. It was installed around 300,000 people who shared their data as well as some of their friends' data. Given the way our platform worked at that time, this meant that Colgan was able to access 10 millions of their friends data so you remember all all this personality quiz and even like today you know you've probably seen like this um picture um this past um there's like some sort of quiz or i don't remember how, how you can call that but basically you upload your picture and it shows you how you would look like in multiple different ways okay think about that this app takes your picture and can create different view and profile of yourself, okay? This is tied with a face recognition system based in the back end. And basically, they accumulate data points on your face. 
And with that, they will be able to, at a certain point, track you everywhere in the near future because these data points will be available to other com company, um, governments, and army. Okay. So when you're sharing and you think it's fun and it's cool, I'll look how I look now because I have like this, uh, this face of uh, this artist or I have this face because uh, I look older or all this kind of stuff. Basically, I mean, what they're doing is they're grabbing your source image and they are, cha and they are grabbing all the information related on that. And then later on, they will use that information, okay? The rest is just like the, the funny thing, just to call you down and just to make, to, 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 to make this like it was cool, okay? Things now have changed a lot. Um, you know, a lot of people here have like probably uh, an Apple or Android and they have like face recognition or Tom's recognition, the fingerprints, all this kind of stuff. Remember that this kind of stuff will always live at a certain point somewhere, okay? Even if they tell you, no, we don't have that, it might, they might have it somewhere, okay? You cannot take the, you cannot 100% be confident on what they will tell you because like that, you know, probably this guy told you, oh yeah, this data was in a very secure places, we didn't touch it, and later on we, heard that they sold that data like to uh, share data from his app with Cambridge and Lactica, okay? We've, so in 2015, they learned that this guy, Colgan, has shared this data, okay? So basically, he acquired this data and he shared it with a third party. Now, the thing we don't really know behind that is in terms of the policy agreement that was in place with this app and the user that took the personality, the personality test. If there was a, 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 clear, pri a, a clear private policy behind and that, that was saying uh, they had the right to use that data how they wanted and they would be able to share with third party company, I mean, it was clear, you know? Now, what Facebook didn't like is basically this data uh, went directly to Cambridge without having clear, I mean, because it's basically against their uh, their policy or their policy at this time. I mean, that part is not 100% clear, but they didn't like that this thing went through Cambridge and Electica or probably it's something that they tried to say to protect themselves, you know? Um, so this, we need, you know, we need to understand that part better here. Um, and last week, what they say, uh, they may not, they may not have deleted the data, this ad certified and blah, blah, blah. And this basically that went like, uh, to the next level, you know? So, um, uh, this was a breach of trust between, uh, Kogan and, and Facebook and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they can say that, but at that, at that time, you know, in 2013, I mean, it was very easy to access to uh, Facebook data without scraping anything, just by having a, a software, an app, a Facebook app that was, um, it was able at that time to grab multiple point of information. And we were working at that time with a company called Umbel. So Umbel is basically an app that you, uh, I mean, it's, it's a software as a service where um, this company basically works with uh, a hundred brands, I mean, like crazy names here. And what they do is um, they have an app like Contest, um, even like when you want to connect to the Wi-Fi of the establishment that you're going, like, let's say you're going to see the Nets, you go into uh, their place and you have like this pop-up because you want to access to um, the, um, the Wi-Fi, so you're going to say yes, but what you're going to do is you're going to log in with your Facebook Connect, Facebook login. And soon as you get into their Facebook login, you get into their database and people have information about you on every points possible that are tied with Facebook and Facebook uh, are able to give. So I remember like when we were working with them, we were able to see all their demographic, 
uh, Facebook pages they liked and all this kind of stuff. And we were able like to create segments based on that or seeing like correlation between multiple people. And after that, create a custom audience and create a lookalike. So we'll be, we were, were able to have like um, better uh, targeting over, uh, over that because we knew exactly what people uh, loved, you know? So like even like contests, we're able like to do contests and you were using like a, a Facebook login. Uh, so you were able like to share the data and all this kind of stuff, you know? Um, Phil, you mentioned that we scroll very fast and accept the usage of certain website or app. If we really don't want our information given, the alternative is not to use or visit anything since if we refuse to accept the agreement, not partial except that it's all nothing agreement. They simply refuse. Yeah, exactly. The biggest problem is, is when you want to access to something is they will either let you in or not. You know, it's like, it's like in the, on these websites, you know, that you need to have 18 years old or more, you know, so uh, to access, if you're not 18, you will not have partial <laughs> access at all. Uh, it's basically like that. So if you want to get into Facebook, you need to agree if not, you will not be able to do that, you know? So there's no, um, there, there's no, uh, let's say, um, how can I say that, uh, balance between the data that you have to give to have access to the, this platform and the type of uh, access you will get. Um, that's a very good point, Mike. Mike. And um, and yes, I think it's it's part also of the problem there. Um, probably there, there, there will be like much more or better probably at certain point platform or social platform that will help you to gauge that. Uh, or Facebook will get to that point uh, there. But the problem is Facebook already got all our data. So it's we're already game over from that point, you know. Um, so, I mean, basically these companies uh, are able to grab a, a bunch of stuff uh, right off the gate. And that's one thing here. I mean, because I mean, we use that. So I, I really know like that platform there. And I mean, it's as a marketer is great. I mean, because you get a lot of information about your customers. And I think that as long as you use that, and you have a, a clear policy, uh, there's nothing wrong there. I mean, there's nothing wrong getting um, this retargeting, you know, and if you can opt out, this retargeting is even better. So letting people opting out of advertisement, I think this is something that will be even bigger uh, in the upcoming uh, month on Facebook. Facebook will will do will probably bring that up, um, same as other uh, advertising network, where you will have a, a chance to opt out advertising that you see from um from your banners and things like that from website that you're seeing and all that this kind of stuff um and opting out opting out from advertising um will make um direct marketing stronger as well you know because that's another another thing like for marketer i mean the question here now is okay um it's going to become very strict it's going to be com coming harder to get these people information how are we going to be able to do that you know that's a big question so i always come back to the basic and and the basic is the data that you control and that you own is much more easier to um either re-engage people and tell them the benefits of being with you and and this kind of stuff you know instead of renting data from other platforms so my motto has always been to um, increase the number of people you have in your mailing list, you know, or into your CRM and build your own data um, storage yourself. Don't, I mean, use that Facebook and things like that to gather the, the, the first point of contact. But after that, um, enrich your own data and, and, and build your own stack of data and build that relationship with people that will be able like to trust you, you know. And basically this marketing companies I mean, they don't really care about that because, I mean, they are there to offer service for, because who's paying them? I mean, basically, who's paying the Umbel? Umbel is a marketing company, the Nets, and all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, they are like a bridge between, uh, <clears throat> let's say, a Facebook and, uh, and you, okay? So, that's good until that point. But after that, if you're, let's say, like Cambridge, 
and you want to sell back data on the side, this is where it's be it's becoming a bit uh, a bit weird, you know, because you as a user you never agreed <clears throat> you never agreed for that. You agreed to have a direct relationship with the people that you're dealing with. Okay, I think that makes sense. <laughs> So you have a bunch of stuff like that. I'm gonna go back to my uh, to my share because I'm um, I'm I'm starting to I, I need like a where I was where I was that was the question. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So yeah, we talk about Cambridge. We talk about interesting facts. Now the type of companies that are out there that are. Um, I, and I put like a random companies that are much more bigger out there. They're or, Oracle that you probably know. They're huge, huge in terms of big data. They're probably one of the biggest out there. Uh, and they offer also suites of software and things like that to help you to build your own data set. But Nexology is, is, is another company that is uh, also from Montreal. Uh, Nexology, what they're doing is they're listening. They're basically listening what everything is happening online, specifically on Twitter. So they're very uh, targeted on Twitter. So everything that happens on Twitter, they are able to predict what's going to happen in terms of political stuff, um, sometimes even like um, uh, anything related to sports event and you know all the kind of stuff that uh, there's a lot of activity on Twitter. Uh, so from the predictive standpoint and also understanding what people love, like, and things like that. So they are able to create audiences from that and um, help customers to reach the, the, these audience. Um, so, <clears throat> and this, I mean, uh, this um, this company has an app also for Hootsuite. So if you're using Hootsuite, you can connect um, to this company and uh, with this company app, and you will have like a, a perfect, like let's say, a view of um, a keywords that is in your niche. And if you want to track like specific stuff, you will have like all the links between. I mean, it's it's totally crazy, but this show you all crazy the technology it is behind when it's time to listen, follow, uh, understanding who's, who's there, uh, making like to, to dive as, as, as until what user is doing, you know? So even here <coughs> with my agency and for our uh, customer, what we do is we are able really to see each point where they've been before uh, Facebook, where, where after they've been, just to follow all, all their path up to they make a purchase. And even after this purchase, we can see exactly which side they went and all this kind of stuff. So imagine what I can do myself, okay, and what Facebook can do on their side. You know, as soon as you log in or you use a, a Facebook login like that, so I'm going to go back and share back my screen because <laughs> I'm moving from one to the other. And so soon as you move back, let's say, to Pinterest, what's happening? So Pinterest, you have two choices, okay? What I suggest to people, if you want to protect as much as possible your data, is create a different login for each of the platform you're going. Don't use the Facebook Connect and all this kind of stuff because this leaves footprints not only on, on, on Facebook sides, but other sides as well, you know? So Facebook can know as soon as you're logged in <coughs> each time that you're going to Pinterest, okay? If you leave your Facebook on, they can know which website you've been. If there's a Facebook pixel on their website, it's even, I mean, the type of precision that they get is even like crazier than that, okay? So as soon as you log in, I mean, Facebook will have information from what you're doing. So that's one thing there. Um, <clears throat> but it seems to be just simple. You know, it's just to, to, to be simple to connect with Google or to, to connect with, um, <clears throat> with, um, with Facebook, Google or Facebook or whatever I mean you want. And this is what we call social login. And there's like a couple of companies also that does that. There's login radius, okay? Uh, we did install that on our... Uh, on our e-commerce. So basically we offer the people to register with Facebook, okay? Uh, when they create an account instead of using their stuff like they do on Pinterest. And this gives us like extra data points as well. <clears throat> so, um, and special audience also that we can create from that standpoint. So that's a possibility. So that's a, a, a company that does that. And basically you can push people to, um, to use that registration if you're doing like, 
uh, quizzes, contests, and all this kind of stuff. You can create like point, I mean, extra information points into their profile, what they've done, what they did, where they were, and all this kind of stuff. And this will stack all the information there. <laughs> and after that, I mean, um, you have like user management and insights. I mean, this will give you like all the information about these users, uh, type of activities they're doing, uh, the social insights. Um, I mean, there's so many stuff that you can get, you know, that's just like crazy. Uh, you can push that back information to email system, uh, to a CRM, to anything. Um, there's Giga, Giga as well that is there. Uh, they're pretty known also. They're managing very big companies in terms of their social login and uh, identity management. Um, there's a good thing and there's a bad thing. I mean, the good thing, again, for marketer is great because you're building uh, really a huge amount of data from that and you can do progressive profiling. Uh, I will explain to you a bit how it is working. <clears throat> and I, having like a, a, a very, um, having a one view, directly a one view of what's going on of, on each user's uh, and all this kind of stuff. And for them, and if you have like multiple websites, like you have like this big conglomerate of, you know, a new site or things like that, you can have only one login that will go across all platforms. So you don't need to log in again uh, to access uh, these websites. So they create like that kind of stuff. And again, I mean, this will bring extra uh, points there. So you've seen like different uh, type of stuff uh, and there's um, either like bigger, what we, what we call DMP. So data management platform, which is even like bigger because this is really like the value of big, of big data where you, you import all the information from different stream and you're able to follow people from wherever they go, okay? This is like super huge. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, by having like this kind of audience and using that kind of stuff, um, you can also start doing advertising to really another level if you're connected to some exchange or display networks or things like that. This gives you like um, really next level stuff. This is super expensive. This is really like enterprise level. Um, but I mean, this gives another uh, level of uh, power in terms of data. So, I mean, this is just to show you globally the kind of tools and th there's like other tools uh, out there, but just the kind of tools that this kind of companies have access to create the, the profile and to gather all the data that is about you on the internet, okay? And like I said, this is really a small portion of what's available. Do you think the cost of ads will get down after this shakedown or will it keep rising since the new news fees change and the restriction? Uh, <clears throat> basically, this is a very good question. As an advertiser, uh, I think that right now we're very in a very expensive uh, point for, uh, for Facebook. Uh, I haven't seen any time, any much more expensive time than we are now. Uh, basically, I don't know if this will go low. Um, because there's a huge amount of advertiser, even if this thing is getting there and there's a couple of advertiser that are going out, it will not be enough to make a huge difference in the numbers of new advertiser that are coming. I think they were talking about a million of advertiser advertising on Facebook right now. So <clears throat> I don't think that one and even a big one will make a huge difference because they will get much more. And this is only, um, if we're only talking about United States, you know, um, Europe is growing right now. There's much more people advertising. I've seen like a huge change in terms of the uh, of the cost also in the last six months. Um, we haven't talked about uh, Asia. We haven't talked about also China doing advertising for the U.S. market. I mean, that's very. I mean, that's huge. That's totally huge. Okay. So that's crazy. And we haven't talked about it yet. So I think there's, again, a lot of, uh, I mean, it's it's going to be like very, 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 uh, there's going to be a very uh, good competition there. And that's also the reason why I push people to build their own data set of information to to do lead generation mostly to to start doing progressive profiling on their own data set for their own store, starting mailing, starting doing direct messages, uh, Facebook Messenger, SMS, and all this kind of stuff. <coughs> uh, 
and building your own platform of content because building your own platform of content is where you're going to be able to drive your people, your community and um, give them something to eat. You know, there's not only Facebook out there, there's other sites out there. And this is one thing that is very important is to uh, be able to maintain these people and not only inside Facebook, but outside Facebook as much as possible. Uh, Besides native advertising, do you see any other uh, new traffic source that makes sense for direct response marketer? I mean, <clears throat> direct response marketer, um, I mean, native is good. Uh, I feel like native is in between uh, PPV and, um, and impulsive buying, let's say. So it's, it's in between those two. Uh, we are seeing people that are having a lot of success in native ad advertising are, yes, um, in skincare, things like that. Uh, we've seen also click arbitrage doing very good on, on native advertising. I think like content advertising is where you want to go. Um, like I was saying, uh, building your own source of traffic. I think that's the key. Building your own source of traffic is where you want to to, to move on. Um building your, and it's all about building content. So you need to think about building your own platform where you will drive very cheap traffic there, where you will nurture your people, build a community, uh, build um, a cult even around what you're doing. And from there, it's going to be much more easier to, um, <clears throat> to grab this traffic and transform that into sales. Um, and all sorts of, tra of, tra of traffic are good at a certain point. You know, you can go back on the PPV if you want, like pay-per-view stuff. Uh, <clears throat> you can do, um, you know, uh, network um, display display network if you want. You can do a bunch of stuff, but you need to direct something. You need to direct your traffic where people will feel a sense of um, a source where they they, they can uh, basically come back and come back over, you know, uh, not a one time deal. You know, the problem selling directly a product is most of the people will not come back after they will make that one purchase and they will, they will not go come back. And that's a huge problem in e-commerce and what I see mostly from, from the customers that I'm working with <coughs> is the, the goal there. And there's really few that have like a lot of success in returning customers, but the, the goal there is really to not always uh, putting the product first, you know, is putting the content first, you know, what is the, what is the tie between you and your customers? Why, why they're interested? Why, why um, they feel this brand makes more sense from that, from them than others, you know? So you need to, to think about all this platform out there and to see how you can use that to provide this kind this kind of content and from this kind of content you will grab them you will be able to grab their their information build their profile and start selling to them uh with a even better conversion rate that's for sure <clears throat> read about the future plans of ai engines on most of google uh platform including google shopping this could be a game changer they say yeah I i've uh, i've heard about that there's a lot of things like in terms of recommendation, in terms of um, of how it will drive uh, to sales directly. Uh, and again, you know, it's all about data, you know, all the information that they have from you, but you still live in this Google world, you know? And I think that most of the people and, and myself I, at a certain point is we put all our hope into this platform that are driving sales directly, which we should use this platform to drive traffic to a platform that is owned by us and then use that platform that is owned by us to drive sales, you know? So there's really one piece of the puzzle right now that can be a very big cha game changer for you and your business if you think if you think uh, enough deeply about it. Um, Next, next, next. So, um, yeah, so how they did it. Okay, so I'm coming back to that uh, that thing because now we want to know how they grabbed the, the, this information. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I mean, they told it like one part of the of the equation was personality quiz, quizzes, social login was one in the progress of profiling, okay? And this is where um, you're going to see here, like I've shared, you know, 
uh, anything that is related to um, to an email address or anything, you can start only with an email address to start gathering information, uh, or you can start with a Facebook login. Already have like their name and their email right away. Sometimes extra information that you can add from it, you know. And like I was saying, people are are gathering information from everywhere. So even like when you are at the airport and you're asking for um, the free Wi-Fi, they will start gathering your data information there. Uh, you're going to the arena, they will ask for your information there. You will, you're going to go into a McDonald's, uh, you're going to download their app, you're going to do whatever. I mean, it, there's always a reason. <clears throat> there's always, you know, um, I can say that um, there's always a way to gather your information, you know, that's for sure. Whatever, I mean, they will do there, they will use one either there and they will do it. Now, if we're talking about progressive profiling, because this is one thing that I want you, and I've already shared that back uh, back in a couple of webinars ago, uh, <clears throat> but one thing that you want to know and understand how it is working is basically there's um, there's a data there's a database. Okay, I'm gonna make that way bigger here. Okay, let's say that's the big database we call big data, <laughs> big not big papa. Or big daddy this is the big data big data center okay um <clears throat> and you will see this is really a buzzword basically it's it's endless amount of data storage that you can put there okay which means that anything that you want to put it, there's always space and thank you for the cloud technology because this was um this is the big part of how we can grow data today um so it's all starting with with some point you know it can be um like today you know webinar <laughs> webinar registration why not webinar registration uh what you what did you do you probably left your email plus your first name okay so we're starting with that where this information is going is going to <clears throat> to uh the big data Okay, so it's going there. Okay, and there, what's happening is there is a profile that is getting, uh, let's say, a unique ID. That's uh, that's happening there. That is tied to your information. Okay, so information is there. Unique ID. We only know right now there's a number associated to you. There's an email and probably the first name. Later on, what's going to happen is probably. Um, you're going to register to another uh, or you're going to buy a product from me. Let's say you're going to buy a product for me, product, buy. And that information is going to go there again in the big data. But now it's going to type the information inside. So what it's going to do is going to say, oh, Phil came in came from the registration of a webinar. And we can know exactly which webinar it was, okay? Then Phil left his email and first name and address and also the product later on, the product that he bought, you know? So product that he bought, product, bought, okay? <clears throat> and so on, okay? So this is what's happening there. Clack, clack, clack. All this information goes and is tied to this unique ID, and it's in this big data. The thing with big data is uh, it's it's not structured information, okay? It's information that is all there, but because you put link between at a certain point, it will all map what is tied about this UID, okay? Uh, it makes it like just easier to uh, store data faster. That's the whole reason about the big data and why it is not structured data compared to structure, let's say MySQL data. Uh, if you know about the MySQL data, it's it's like what most of the website are using uh, or software are using in the back end is structured data with tables and rows and things like that. Big data is like you were putting like a bunch of stuff in the trash and it's all there. And but I mean, there's a link in between. OK. Uh, Gary, this is my favorite. It's called Lucid Chart. Uh, I really love it. <laughs> um, so basically, what you're doing is each time, let's say, and if you have like, let's say, Facebook. So I mean, you you connected with an app that I have on Facebook, like let's say uh, FB app. 
non-dial the app. I don't know. I sell you another stuff there, you know, uh, I don't know, a new software related to something, you know, and that information, because you use the, the Facebook login, that information is going to be tied to your UID and is going to say, uh, Phil got this app, he downloaded it and he used it. And because Facebook gives you the opportunity to insert analytics now, I mean, so Facebook as if I remember, uh, the analytics, the marketing, the, it has like the Facebook analytics here. So you can connect to the Facebook at an analytics API, you can connect that to your app and it's going to start adding like a bunch of information based on what you're doing on the app, you know, and that information, I can bring that back, um, to, uh, my, my big data center here. Okay. So basically this is something that they, um, they did. Uh, I assume they did because I mean, I would have done that like that basically uh, is I try, I would try to get as much different ways of grabbing your information in different angle based on different type of activities and put that in this big data center and build a whole profile. So at the end, I know, okay, Phil is there, his demographic is that he, he, he's playing to clash of clans. Uh, because he downloaded like that on the mobile app. Uh, he's using an iPhone. Uh, he is doing that, 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 that. And I, and I can have, like, I don't know, like multiple thousand, 20,000 data points of everything I did, you know? And because you bought on my Shopify store and I, I have a Facebook um, uh, pixel there, I can probably try to uh, grab extra more information from what you did, you know, and try to compile that at the same place and uh, build something crazy uh, for you. So when it's gonna be time to know, to understand what you want, uh, I will be able like to to just like push you, you know, what you want. How do you think Amazon did it? You know, Amazon is, I mean, basically Amazon is, is a data business, is data first. I mean, Amazon, I mean, selling online for Amazon is is not, I mean, it's, it's just a, a way for them to get information because their core business is data. That's it, like Facebook. Facebook, their core business is data, is not, you know, uh, helping you having a better time in the social media world. I mean, before Facebook, we had a live, you know, we're going outside, we're playing, we're doing any kind of other stuff, you know? So basically um, their core business is data. And because data is, is worth so much, that um, that is how they, they are uh, big like that. You know, it's why they are value at this billions of dollars, even if they're not making money. You know, uh, Twitter has so much data also about their user and what they're doing is they, they, even if you think, I mean, they're not making money. I mean, it's worth so much because of what they are. Um, and that's how they play the game. You know, the social media network is how they play the game. They play the game by the data. They're not playing the game, basically. I mean, the whole rest is, uh, I would tell you, is almost like bullshit. I mean, the whole rest is just a way to get the user inside so, so they can build this huge data point set, okay? Uh, can they know which porn movies I watch too? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, would, I would say yes. I would say yes. It is possible. There, there, there's multiple ways of, of, uh, of grabbing that information. Um, yeah, basically. Um, totally. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure. <laughs> so yes, if they have your UID, probably they don't know your name, but they have a UID uh, tied to you something. Because in the UID, remember, uh, you can have the IP address. And now because um, they have like the MAC address and they have like much more information, they know when you travel. Okay. So the only way to not getting um, getting trace is when you're you're traveling is to not, first of all, to never use any application that you're using, okay? To never use any phone or the same. So if you're using a phone, you need to buy this phone where you're at with a fresh new number and to make sure that uh, there's there's nothing tied to you, you know, even like bank account or anything you need to pay in cash. And there was like a book by a very well-known um, hacker uh, back in the days that really, that, yeah, that he released a book and he was explaining exactly how to live without and not being retraced by anything 
uh, even like he was telling how to buy Bitcoins and pay into Bitcoins without being ever retraced because there is a way to not ever be retraced because Bitcoin can be retraced up to a certain point, you know, uh, but he was explaining as well that kind of stuff. So, yes, it's Mike is, is dangerous if you have like something uh, to hide, basically, you know, if you really have something to hide, it's better to, they say, you know, take a hard line if you want to contact someone is is even like better to go the old school way or to send a pigeon if you want to someone else. Uh, because um, so many ways right now they can gather information about you. It's just like totally, totally, totally crazy. Um, so yes, we are in this world. And you know, the, the funny thing is like in China, that you're used to that. There was a documentary that I've seen on Facebook about all what they're doing and all the, the, their um, QQ app is controlling everything and all they manage the data they're, they're using and how they have to be at a certain point careful, but it's part now of their DNA, you know, how they, they, they play with that because they know this will be used. And you know how China is, um, is even like um, they're hard on people when it's when people don't play by the rules, let's say, you know, so People have to be careful and they, they know about it. They try to, to play like that. And yeah, that's part, uh, like I was saying, a bit of their DNA. But basically, that's that's what's happening there, you know. So this is what we call progressive profiling. Um, so basically, people, um, I mean, everything they want to know, they can know about you. That's for sure. As soon as you live like something on, on the Internet. It's not like it used to be. And yes, um, I think I'm. I think like um, Mark was saying that. I mean, there, there, there's going to be a need for some sort of regulation, not only for the the advertiser. Like I think it was talking about uh, advertising uh, regulation on on the internet. But I mean, for for the user and for this for the people gathering data and what kind of data they can get and where they can store it and all this kind of stuff. Because I mean, it's it's super it's super uh, easy. Um, like you, you've seen many times that hackers can go in this kind of stuff and release a bunch of information about other people, you know. Um, back in 2015, uh, I mean, I shared a bit with you very fast what was possible to do, but be before 2015, it was super easy in, in Facebook to gather information from the users without scraping, you know, because Facebook would uh, put that option almost by default where you could grab information when you create an app. Uh, and after in 2015, you had to go through an approval and it was taking two, three weeks because they had to analyze everything you're doing with your business and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I haven't launched any apps since there on Facebook, so I don't really know about the process now, but they say it's, uh, it's, way, it's, it's way more strict right now. And like you say, like we see, you know, the Cambridge Analytica thing, it's it it happens really. I mean, all this information, this this information happened like way before. And they say about a breach. I mean, that was not a breach. I mean, the information was there, was available, and they just used it, you know. So it's very difficult to say right now in 2015 it was a, bre a breach, but because I mean it was there, it was available for anyone almost that wanted like to create an app. So it's a bit weird. <laughs> um Yes, uh, it did change. Yeah, you can. Okay, so that's it. Um, what? You, so I've shared like a bunch of uh, of tools right now that you can use, you know, to build profiles. So there's whole hold up IO login radius, Giga Generate. You can use Hop HubSpot uh, CRM. Uh, if you are on, um, uh, if you you can do it also on, with your email marketing software like Clavio. You can enter a bunch of data points on Clavio. Uh, to enrich your information and to create better segmentation as well later on. Uh, <clears throat> just like it's not super organized when you want to look at it. So if you would like to have a very nice visual and insights of your of your um, prof profiles that are in your database, probably a login radius will do a better job, you know. And the last thing, uh, if you're a marketer, uh, you... Uh, certainly, certainly want to do that. You want absolutely to have as much information as possible. Like I was saying earlier, um, I think right now is the best time to 
uh, go after leads generation. So if you want to build like some good uh, leads uh, at a good price, it's time now because things might change later on. And if you build your database now, I mean, it's just better because people would have agreed to what they, they're going to receive. And the next thing is, like I say, I mean, think about building your own platform where you can drive people, where these people will be tied to your audience that you can um, give them something, some content that they will be happy and more than happy uh, to uh, to read, to watch, to whatever, I mean, and engage with you. Um, it has much more value for you, for your business long-term as well. Uh, it's part also of the, the branding process. So it's good. You know, we, we did that for Gothwriter. So we have Gothwriter magazine and we try to bring people there um, just because, there, there's a better relationship and it's easier also to create a connection without doing uh, the product right into their throat and trying to art sell them, you know? So it's a process. Think about that. It's a process. Um, more you know about your ideal customer, better. I mean, you're going to be in terms of targeting and it's going to be much more easier also because you're going to be able like to create like direct audience, custom audience from that instead of trying to figure out always, you know, is that traffic is good, is not good or does the interest are good or not? You know, um, we were talking about source of traffic. Uh, you must look at Pinterest. Pinterest is, is is something that is very under evaluated right now, but has very big potential. Uh, you just need to understand how it is working. And basically, if you know a bit about SEO uh, and keywords, keywording stuff, I mean, uh, Pinterest is working a lot like that. So getting the right keywords for their search engine, because this is basically all people are looking. So, and you can use that to drive traffic again, uh, to content uh, or to a store uh, also at the end, you know? And la latest thing for you is uh, be sure to respect your customers' data and their trust, because this is what will let you live uh, forever. This is what will give you something to eat at a certain point. You know, if you breach that, people will not respect you at all anymore. They will stop doing business with you. So that's very, very, very important. But guys, that was about it. I, I just went like very fast on that. Uh, hope uh, you love that kind of stuff. If you have questions, I will be more than happy. Uh, we can go like for sure, very, very technical. Uh, but I, I think at a certain point, uh, it will be boring. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's so much thing that, I, that, that we can talk about that, different kind of strategies and things like this. So uh, if you're interested in much more, you know, be sure to, um, to leave a message. Uh, I will send the replay so it will be available on YouTube. And also, uh, if you want to uh, give me a shout out on Shopify strategy and just tell, you know, if you like this, presentation uh that would be great so we can drive people uh on youtube as well to to watch the replay so um any question guys thank you timothy thank you mike thank you david it was great to have you there thank you guys had uh, a lot of fun as well um what we have here Go back. Yep. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Christian. Cheng. Thanks, Louie. Thanks, George. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Alexander. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, it was great to see you. And we talk to you soon. Ciao, Nagesh, as well. Ciao, guys. Bye. <laughs>